At Brussels Fair with the contest for international prestige and the graceful, airy United States Pavilion with its cheerful showcasing of America's everyday life stood in favorable contrast to the looming Soviet Exhibition Hall. America won a triumph on the cultural front, but the Kremlin in 1958 took the initiative in the global power struggle. Khrushchev's wooing of Gamal Abdel Nasser brought new upheavals in the Middle East. Strengthened by Soviet arms and economic aid, Nasser began the year by joining Egypt and Syria into the new United Arab Republic. Pan-Arabism was on the march. Nasser was his prophet, and there was dire peril for friends of the West, such as King Faisal of Iraq and his uncle Prince Abdul Ilah, whose attempted united front with Hussein of Jordan was ended by an army-led revolt in Iraq. Faisal, his uncle, and Premier Nouri S. Said, three of Nasser's staunchest foes, were slain in a wave of shocking violence. Neighboring Lebanon, torn by Nasser incited rebellion, called for aid, and United States Marines landed near Beirut. The landings were only a few hours by air from Soviet frontiers. A possible red attack was the calculated risk of this bold response to Lebanon's call for help. The Marines, by their very presence, were a stabilizing force. The government restored order so that free elections could be held. The crisis passed, and Russia's denunciations and demands for a summit meeting abruptly faded as Red China provoked a new crisis in the Strait of Formosa. Communist guns launched a massive barrage against the Cremoy Island group, nationalist islands barely three miles offshore. 50,000 shells landed in one day, beginning a rain of fire intended to cut off supply shipments. the blockade by barrage and the threat of invasion, the U.S. 7th Fleet was reinforced. The mightiest naval force ever assembled, it shepherded Chinese supply convoys to the edge of territorial waters. At first, landing craft were unable to pierce the curtain of fire. But as stockpiled food and supplies ran dangerously low, more and more convoys and airlifts got through. The balance shifted, red gunfire grew sporadic, and the Cold War pressure again shifted abruptly. Now to West Berlin, that enclave of freedom 110 miles behind the Iron Curtain. The free city was a showcase for democracy and capitalism. Its obvious prosperity in two-pointed contrast to the regimentation and shabby poverty of the Soviet held sector. Red militiamen drilled amid the rubble of World War II. Much of East Berlin is still unreconstructed after more than a decade. Under Den Linden, pre-war avenue of elegance typified East Berlin's fight. Russia demanded that Berlin be neutralized and made free of four power control. The Soviet flag no longer flew before the Allied Kommandatura as Khrushchev's six-month deadline drew near. The stage was set for another Berlin blockade, or worse, in a bold Soviet gambit threatening the entire balance of power on the continent. <laughs> 